bag. You take that wallet out now, the smell is unbelievable. I, because Bobby was working at Merrill Lynch, was right across the street, they let me go down to Merrill Lynch quite a bit. But the smell was unbelievable. The smell is unbelievable now. If I took that wallet out, it has that dust on it, and it smells the same it did down at Ground Zero back in 2001. The contaminants in the air. You just, I don't think, unless anybody has a respiratory, a horrible respiratory problem. <coughs> now, I, I was down there, I don't, not that much, but I have COPD. I don't know if it's from Ground Zero. My fatigue, uh, when you have respiratory problems, your fatigue, you just, it's very difficult to do well, like walking up steps. It's not normal to be absolutely tired when you walk up steps. But someone just died from uh, one of the workers, I think it was a fireman, they had pulmonary fibrosis. So I looked up pulmonary fibrosis. Your, your lungs are all scarred. You can't exist as a human being. And these people are dying. I came back to Grand Zero on the first year anniversary and I walked down from, I always like to come up later and I you know, just spend time down at Grand Zero, especially then you still had the pit. I walked down from um, Grand Central, not Grand Central, uh, Madison Square Garden, and I got Canal Street, and I could still, smell. still smell the same smell that I had smelled the year before. It was still in the air. That was thick smoke. I mean, asbestos, as you say, every computer, everything, pieces of glass, or no glass. I mean, those are huge towers. And where did that all go? Into your lungs. When I come up here every year, my, I have a Philadelphia support group. And my wife makes me, she just gets so upset, she said, please, please don't bring 9-11 up in our support group. I did once and we almost got in a fight. There's a couple men in there. But you have to remember, what happened to the people? I have one other person in my support group. Now we used to have like 25 in here. One other person in here. The others have got Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I, I always want to say to them, what do you think happened? But the thing is, not even, you just don't want to go there. You can't believe how lucky I am. I took my son home. I'm able to investigate how he died. But for a mother to think that your son just disappeared into thin air, into air. I hate to say it, but people were inhaling you and whatever it is, molecules. I saw in support group, the guy was 6'4", 250 pounds, and had found nothing. You think you would find a piece of bone. So I was at a, we were at the Ground Zero, or you know, we, we always go out to dinner on the 10th, our support group. And one of them actually started talking to me about, geez, you know, I've been really studying history. You know, going back to World War I, trying to get the connection. I was really hoping he'd get into the idea that, you know, connecting the dots to 9-11. And his son, of course, we found nothing. So I just broached the subject real quickly, and I said, well, what do you think happened? He said, don't you think there were, I really think my son Bobby died from an explosion. His whole chest was filled with glass. His face, it was like he was hit by a shotgun. But I had an intact body, but he had one leg, he was perfectly fine. Well, his son, he has no clue. So then I mentioned explosion. That this one, and they said, what do you mean explosion? So he, so many people, and especially in the 9-11 community, the idea of an explosion it's just beyond their comprehension. They said, well, of course the tower's coming down. I said, well, bodies don't disappear when buildings come down. Not just totally disappear. So we, all, we actually got in an argument. My wife just, she, she was beside herself. That's the first time then I've actually, you know, I said to my wife afterwards, you know, I get a support group, I support them all the time. But why once can't they support me? Because I have these theories about 9-11. So, 
The next day we get Aunt Grand Zero, his daughter was there, she had a McCain button on, but she came up to me. So th this is why what you're all doing is so important, because you don't know where you're planting the seeds. Planting those seeds are so important, but her daughter lives in Minneapolis right now, she's like 34 years old, and she walked up to me and she says, you know, I really feel bad. I don't know anything about 9-11. She said, send me books, send me, so I told her I'm gonna send her DV, and she says, I really wanna look into this. So it, it, it's, it, you really are making a difference. I've learned that, it, it's, as depressed as I get about this whole thing, I just, you know, it, it's, why, it's why everyone comes up here, to get feedback from everyone, that your work is really coming around. So, again, as I said before, you come in, the, you know, my field's coming in, I get this high. I'm with my son's friends. I'm with everybody from 9-11. That is a high. It feels good. And that was a family member who's eating dinner, right? But, of course, anybody's taking drugs, I've certainly, you know, drank enough. With every high comes your low. You know, today's a tremendously low day. And sometimes I wish I could take medication, you know, to get yourself even. But the thing is, with the low, you know, you always know the highs will come back, and that's, of course, where the anger comes. So, I started walking home last night. Someone on the street approaches me, asking for money. Now, I think I spend more money than giving money out there than I do in cabs in New York City. I say, if I have an extra buck, I'll always give someone an extra buck, but I don't have any more money in my pocket. I just had a 20. So, a guy, a big guy, comes up to me and says, uh, you got any extra? I said, look, I don't have anything left. He says, but he kept pursuing me. I said, no. Then I, you know, and I, and I just said to him, I said, look, I'm really down there. I said, you know, I had my son murdered. And he said, well, fuck your son. And I, so I said, well, fuck you. So, but th that's not good. You know, because I, I, I had a threatening call a couple months ago from Troy. Everybody knows Troy. And like an idiot, I got on the, after he said, you know, he said, are you Bob McElvain? And I said, yeah. And he said, did your son die of 9-11? I said, yeah. And he said, well, I hope someone puts a fucking bolt in your head. Well, I went nuts. And I just, I'm calling him MF this, and I mean, I just, and it's not good to lose your temper that way. Right? And what did the guy do? He put it on YouTube. Well, I'll tell you, you feel soiled. You know, it, it, you're trying to keep yourself under control. But he puts on you on YouTube, and I'm saying MF this, and God knows what I said to him. You know, my wife comes running upstairs, what's happening? But that's a, you really got to watch yourself. So anyway, the guy says that to me, and then he kept walking with me. You know, I, didn't, I wasn't about to get in a fight because I get killed. He's a big guy. Then he came up and he says, "Well, how'd you lose your son?" I said, "9/11." Then he just stopped back and, "Hey, look, man, I'm so sorry I said that." He says, "But don't you understand?" This is all bullshit. We're nothing. We're all of us are pawns. I mean, we actually had a nice conversation. It's the most intelligent thing. I mean, I, I've never gotten a conversation like that from anybody from my township in the Philadelphia area. <laughs> you suddenly you realize we're all pawns in this, and I have to do realize that. You know, from the American injury, slavery. This is what our government does. This is what all governments in the Western world has done. That's why history is so important. But this guy had more perspective than most people I know. This is the game this country plays. Voting for Obama, voting for McCain, voting for anyone. I don't know what the answer is. I think maybe we all have to get together and find out a plan that this has to stop. Pardon? State politics with real politics. They're offering us the placebo in the form of Obama and the game. Yeah, I agree with it. It's with real politics. I agree with you. And that's that's why I read more history than anything. But I actually had a nice conversation. That was so refreshing. It started from anger, but then, you know. So I ended up giving him a 20. That's yeah. it. <laughs> That means the way he's going. But hey, I give anybody $20 to have a nice conversation. It was a civil conversation. I mean, it didn't last for like an hour, I think a few minutes. But he just said, don't you? And I do realize that. To see the people in Colombia, how they've died, Guatemala, Honduras, to be in Japan.